Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to look at the next case. I'm going to call it case two. We're actually bypassing the situation where we have under damping. We're going to look at what we call critical damping first. So what that means that critical damping, the damping factor is such that B squared is equal to 4MK. What does that mean? Well, that means that the, expo that the radical here goes to zero. So this goes to zero, and this goes to zero. And then at first you would say, well, then we have a solution where we have X of T is equal to C1 E to the minus B b over 2m or c1 plus c2 but since we have a double root we have to use the the concept of partial fractions to come up with the actual solution to this and the actual solution looks actually a little bit different so we have x as a function of time is equal to c1 times t plus c2 times e to the minus and that becomes b over 2m so that looks a little bit different. So this term here simply comes from the fact that we have a double root, and to find the solution to double root, we have to use the concept of partial fractions. Which means if we then draw this out, if we want to see what the damping effect has, a, what the damping has an effect has, uh, it looks like this. So it could be that we start from a position like here, and the dampening is such that we have critical dampening coming over here. But depending upon the value of C1 and C2, because, for example, C1 could be negative and C2 could be positive, it is possible that we may have a damping effect that looks like this instead, where we come and uh, we drop down very quickly and overshoot and then kind of come in and reach the equilibrium point like that. So that is possible even with critical damping. This is the most common way that it may happen, but this is also possible depending upon the relative values of C1 and C2. But nevertheless, what we'll find is that with, a, with the critical damping like here, where B squared is, is set up in such a way that it's equal to 4MK, that gives you the, the probability of getting to the equilibrium point the fastest way possible. Over damping simply means that it's going to take longer. So there, here's an example what it would look like compared to over damping, and this is critical damping right here. So this, let me write it down. So this would be over damping that we saw in case one. And then here, the black line here represents critical damping. A practical solution for this would be, for example, the springs on your car. Let's say you're driving on the road, you hit a bump, you hit a, a pothole or something like that, and the springs on your car are supposed to get your car back to the equilibrium position. So first the car will kind of bump up and then you want to get back to the equilibrium position. Well, if you have over damping, that means that the shocks are too strong for your car, too powerful for your car. You hit the bump, you bump up and then you're very, very slow to go back to the equilibrium so that the initial impact is very hard. That's over damping. Critical damping is that you hit the bump, it's a little softer and then you get back to the equilibrium as fast as possible. So critical damping is a system that you want to apply, um, it's, it's a mechanism that you want to apply to systems where you want to get the quickest return back to normal, to equilibrium, without hitting the, without hitting the uh, bump too hard. And so that would be a, an example for critical damping. But this is the general solution in this case. And the reason why we have this C1T term is because the fact that we have the double root. So that means that this equation collapses down to this equation to describe critical damping.